If you ask Tony Campolo, he'll tell you that mixing government with religion is like mixing ice cream with horse manure. First of all, gross. Second of all, which is which. And third of all, you're not going to ruin the horse manure, but you're definitely going to spoil the ice cream. And what you might end up with is politicians injecting religion into a leadership race. As president, I'll end Obama's war on religion. 62% of children who enter college with a faith conviction leave without it. This administration is waging war on religion. Tony is an ordained Baptist minister who believes some of his fellow evangelicals in the U.S. are actually doing the country a disservice. There's been a tendency among many evangelicals to suggest that if you're not in the Republican Party, that somehow you don't walk with God. He calls himself a red letter Christian, meaning he feels most strongly about parts of the New Testament, the parts of the direct teachings from Jesus, as in the ones written in red, Jesus' words. Red letter Christians generally really believe that evangelicalism has been exploited by politicians on both the left and the right. He says they spend too much time debating two points, homosexuality and abortion. Now Tony's got some strong opinions on both those issues himself, but he mainly preaches on how we can overcome barriers, connect with each other, and promote social justice. To not take care of the poor is a sin. Tony's father was a union organizer, and it's safe to say some of that tenacity rubbed off on him because as his clashes with Rush Limbaugh and the late Reverend Jerry Falwell clearly show, he ain't afraid to stir it up. I belong to a church that throws birthday parties for whores at 3.30 in the morning. Tony Gambo! Hey, buddy, how are you? Good to see you. How are you, man? You well? I'm fine. Welcome back. Good to be back. How have you been? Terrific. Keep him busy, right? For an old guy. <laughs> I am <laughs> old. Not that old yet. Yes, you know you're old when your wife says, let's go upstairs and have sex, and you say, I can't do both. <laughs> you know you're old. You know you're old. <laughs> well, my, uh, as a man who hopefully will one day be old, my follow-up question is, which one did you choose? Uh, I sold our three-story house, and we've moved into a one-floor condominium. <laughs> <laughs> Honey! <laughs> That's it. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, all right, so we saw the bio we played there. This conversation that's been raised again about same sex marriage and your, your notion that you've talked about that. The idea that just Republicans are the only ones who believe in God. How, how big is the divide in the evangelical community? Well, it's, it's wide because politicians are making it wide. They're pushing Christians in two directions. Uh, the liberal wing of the church is pushed towards Obama. The evangelical wing of the church is pushed towards now Mitt Romney. And the politicians are really uh, setting the agenda for Christians instead of it being the other way around, which is crazy. Well, how is it, how is it that anybody that's a politician set the agenda for the conversation? Don't you, shouldn't they have their own opinions? I, I would think so. Uh, and it's, it's largely uh, the, the clergy the, that nurtures it. You know, they hear the politicians and they identify with one or they identify with the other. I think it's about time that we recognize that Jesus in the United States is neither a Democrat nor a Republican. Uh, Jesus transcends partisan politics. I think when anybody asks a red-letter Christian, are you a Democrat or are you a Republican, mm -hmm. the answer should be, would you please cite the issue? Because on some issues, if you're going to be faithful to Jesus, you're going to vote with the Republicans. On some issues, if you're faithful to Jesus, you'll vote, vote with the Democrats. And so as a red-letter Christian, you mean the Christians that just basically take the words of Jesus as opposed to all the other stuff that come with it? Well, the thing is that two things are true. First, Jesus makes it clear that what he has to say is more important than anything else. If you read through the Sermon on the Mount, he often says, uh, you have heard it said, uh, Moses taught you this, the old prophets taught you, but I give you a new commandment. I have something new to tell you. Right. And his morality is so radical. I mean, he, you can't believe in Jesus and take the scriptures seriously and believe in capital punishment. Everybody who's against homosexuality based on religious reasons, um, yeah. if they're legitimately religious reasons, as opposed to their own intolerance or their own hate or their own ignorance or whatever, um, say because the Bible says it's an abomination. Jesus doesn't say it's an abomination. So is Jesus against homosexuality? It, I don't know. It's, what I do know is that Jesus did not put his emphasis there. Right. Uh, well, you, did he, well, how did he cover it at all? Well, I think he is very much in favor of people being loyal to each other of being faithful to each other, of being kind to each other, and most of all, being loving to each other. I think to deny justice to gays and lesbians on the one hand, and then turn around 
and say, uh, we love you on the other. Mm -hmm. it, it seems weird. I mean, you can't say I love somebody and then say, but I'm going to deny certain rights and privileges that I have that you can't have. Uh, justice is nothing more than love turned into a social policy. Why is the establishment in the traditional church against homosexuality? I think that they pick on this issue, and I'm a conservative on this issue, but they have overemphasized this issue. What do you mean you're conservative on the issue? Well, you know, my do wife... Do you think being gay is a sin? No, I think that uh, certainly not being gay is a sin. Okay. People don't choose to be gay. Okay, so uh, people are born gay. I, I don't know what makes people gay. Okay. There isn't a, I'm a sociologist by trade. There isn't a sociologist I know who understands what makes people gay. What's more is I think that when the church offers this possibility that, you know, if you get good counseling, if you pray enough, you're going to change, yeah. I think we hold out a hope that doesn't really exist. Right. There are unusual cases where it does happen, but it's so unusual that to make this a normative expectation for gays and lesbians is unrealistic. So then explain to me, what do you mean you're conservative on the issue? Well, I basically believe this, that the um, government should not legitimate any kind of, uh, well, should, should not legitimate marriage, period. Right. That's a strong, strong statement. Marriage is something that the church should do. The government should guarantee people's rights. Right. Whether it's a gay couple, whether it's a heterosexual couple, when they go to the city hall and register, they should get the same rights. Right. If you want to call it a marriage, you should go to the church. The ch marriage is a religious institution. It's a religious ordinance. It doesn't have to be. Marriage can just be a bond between two people. Well, then don't... Yes, it, it can be. But I think that people should make it into a religious relationship. That's my own feeling. Here's the thing. And here's what I'm saying. Yeah. If, if, if somebody's gay and wants to be married, they should go to a church that marries gays. Right. If somebody's heterosexual and doesn't believe in gay marriage, go to a church that doesn't marry gays. How about this, Freedom though? should be the norm. Right, but how about this idea? How about that? I hear what you're saying, but using that, because you're trying to be respectful to individual faith. Yes. Right? But... If a golf club says black people aren't allowed to golf at this club, then you're saying an African American should go to a club that allows African Americans, or should all citizens be entitled to the same rights, regardless of what? Like no institution is allowed to impose rights that violate everybody's I equality. I believe everybody is entitled to the same rights, right. first and foremost. Marriage, by definition, has always been a religious statement. The President of the United States, George Bush, once said. Marriage is a sacred institution. Then the government should not control it. The church should control it. And there are some churches that would go with gay marriage. Yeah. There are some churches that wouldn't. And I think the churches should decide who gets married and who doesn't get married. The government should guarantee people civil rights. You know, there's a lot of people, uh, speaking of civil rights, the Reverend Jesse Jackson weighed in. Uh, after uh, President Obama did, uh, he said, LGBT people deserve equal rights, including marriage equality. Discrimination against one group of people is discrimination against all of us. It's, that's the strong statement for Reverend Jesse Jackson. He knows the civil rights movement, absolutely right, as do you. Um, but I still don't understand why people can't say being gay is normal, because it is. Yeah. Well, it's normal for gays. It's normal for any, like, being defined by who you desire, being defined by your, like, why, why, why is everybody afraid of going there? They're afraid, they tell me this. They tell me they're afraid that if we accept gay people as married, it'll destroy a weaken the institution of the church, of the family, right. that the family is being endangered. My response to that is, let's be honest, the family is in trouble. Yeah, because heterosexual couples. That's right. And it's the heterosexuals that are getting divorced. The gays want to get married. Right. And if you can't see the humor in that, <laughs> right. you have no sense of humor whatsoever. <laughs> uh, the reality is, uh, the reality is that uh, uh, the marriage needs to be upheld. Interestingly enough, while Jesus does not speak about homosexuality. Right. The Apostle Paul does, especially in the first chapter of Romans, which is the basis for evangelicals taking the stand that they do. But Jesus never talks about gays. Right. He does talk about divorce and remarriage. I'm amazed. The same people that say we got to be faithful to Scripture turn around and marry people who are divorced, right. even though Jesus specifically says don't do it. So, where is this consistency? So, well, well, but then Jesus can't be talking about inclusion. If Jesus thinks once you're divorced, you're out. You're off the market. 
Well, he does seem to be a little narrow on that he score, sure doesn't does. he? <laughs> okay, we're, you were out of time. you got to come back. Yeah. I want to talk about yeah. time. It's so great to see you. Good to be Thank with you, so you buddy. Take Tony care. Tony Campolo, the author of The Red Letter Revolution, is out in October. We'll be right back. Yeah.